Good morning, Macedonia, and to my YouTube viewers and Facebook viewers who come to share with us on this beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has made. We say again to you, good morning. We pray God's blessings upon you, for we do recognize God as being our creator, Jesus the Christ being our redeemer, the Holy Spirit being our comforter, teacher, and guide. We're here today because his grace and his mercy has afforded us another opportunity to stand and declare his goodness. For that, we're grateful and we're thankful. We pray that each of you are continuing to practice social distancing and that your families are safe, that you're being careful, but most importantly, that you are being blessed in the midst of this pandemic. Our prayers yet still go out to you. We pray that the Lord will continue to shine his grace and his mercy upon each and every one of you. Uh, we're not going to be before you long today, but we just wanted to come to share a word to continue to encourage you even in times such as these. For we do know that the word of God is a keeper, it's a strengthener, it's a protector, it's a provider. And so we come today to share a word that you may receive that which you need from our God. If you would let us go to God in prayer, thank him for this day and this opportunity we have to share in the word of God. Eternal God, our heavenly father, we come before thy throne of grace. We're so thankful for the privilege of seeing yet another day we ask now that by your holy spirit lord that you would allow us to decrease that you might increase that you may speak through us to us and for us that your word may go forth with power and that we may be hearers and doers of your word bringing you the honor the glory and the praise hide us now behind yonder's cross your people will see all of you and none of me lord that your church might be edified that your people might be sanctified, but most importantly, that you might be satisfied. For it is in the precious name of Jesus the Christ, Son of the living God, we do declare victory today through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ah, oh, may grain how how sweet the sound that that say oh already like me I oh I want was long but now I'm found was twas blind but now I thank God I see second chronicles chapter twenty second chronicles chapter twenty if you have your Bibles uh, I want to read verses 1, 2, and 3. And then I want to skip down to verses 12 through 17. But keep your Bibles open as we will paraphrase through the chapter uh, that we may uh, have the opportunity uh, to speak of God's goodness, speak of the time that Jehoshaphat uh, had to have a conversation with God because his people were in trouble. And so if you have your Bibles, go with me again to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I want to read verses 1 through 3, then verses 12 through 17. From the original King James Version of the Bible, you shall find inscribed these words. It came to pass... After this also that the children of Moab 
and the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gadai. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Verse 12 says, Our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord and their little ones, their wives and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. And thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not dismayed or afraid by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow ye go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Thank you. I've read for you verses 1 through 3, 12 through 17 of the 20th chapter of 2 Chronicles, Word of God, for the children of God. I just want to use for a thought this morning as the Spirit allows us, be still. God will fight your battle. I want to use for a thought this morning as the Spirit allows, be still. God will fight your, your battle. My brothers and my sisters, uh, we are living uh, in a time where we don't know really what to do. We don't know what the next moment is going to bring. We don't know what the next hour is going to bring. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But there should be one thing that we should know is that our God yet still sits high and he looks down low. And in spite of what we may be going through, our God is still concerned about us he loves us because we loved his son and because of our love for his son he has a love for us and so it does not matter what we might go through in life no matter what we may uh, be entangled with in the affairs of our day God is yet still concerned about us he has not forgotten about us and he's yet still with us even in times such as these. We're his chosen people, much like um, Jehoshaphat and the children uh, of the descendants of Judah were unto God. They were God's chosen people during this time. If I can just give you a brief history during this time of uh, the children of Israel's life. Uh, they have become a divided kingdom. Uh, they are separated now, and now they are divided by a northern and a southern kingdom. And the northern kingdom was recognized by name as Israel or the children of Israel. The southern kingdom was known as Judah. And God loved Judah because Judah always did their best to stay in fear of God and to obey God's word. It was 
the northern kingdom, it was Israel that was rebellious and took on other gods and and began to rebel against the God that had brought them and brought their forefathers from the land of bondage to the land of plenty. And they had forgotten about this great God who yet sits high and looks down low. And so God had some issues with uh, Israel because they were disobedient, but he loved Judah because Judah was obedient in most of their dealings with God. And not only that, but it was going to be through Judah that God would fulfill his promise to send a king that would be established and reign forever in his kingdom. And so God, God loved Judah and, and thus Judah showed their respect and love towards God. And during this particular time, Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa is now king of Judah. And he was an obedient king who did do things right in the sight of God. He feared the Lord in all of his ways and in all of his doings. And therefore, because of his fear and love for God, God protected them from their enemies. God allowed them to win many battles. God allowed them to uh, have prosperity because they did what God had asked them and required of them to do. And because they were obedient children, God continued to shower blessings on the children of Judah. And I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, this same God, he never changes. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I just double dog dare you this morning just to try in your best effort to be obedient and watch God pour out blessings that you won't even be able to receive just because you fear him and you want to do his will. I guarantee you, if you trust him, never doubt him, he'll bring you out. But then if you do his will, he'll shower down blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. God had his arms wrapped around Jehoshaphat and children of Judah. They were in trouble. They had run into some problems. And we all going to run into problems in our lives. Don't think just because you pay your tithe liberally every week. Don't think just because you read your Bible day after day and know it from front to back. Don't think just because you pray three times a day and you love your enemies as your as Jesus would love you. Don't think just because you think you do everything right. That, that you're excluded from having problems and troubles. In fact, I would like to recommend to you today to be careful. The better, the more you do for God, the more trouble going to come your way. But I want to encourage you, don't give up doing what's best for God. Don't give up doing what's good and right in the sight of God because behind every burden, there comes a blessing. And so if you've been burdened down, just get excited about the fact that behind every burden, there is a blessing. So if you're burdened down right now, you can shout and rejoice because you know that there a blessing on the way. I just need somebody this morning right there in your room to just lift your hands and declare that I've got a blessing coming my way. They were, they were, in, they were in trouble because uh, they had an enemy that had, had come together and ganged up and decided that they would go against Jehoshaphat and Judah. One thing you got to know about the enemy the enemy is cunning, he's conniving, he's, uh, he does everything crooked because uh, he knows that, that if, he can, if he can conquer you, he knows that he can have you. And most of the time, you have to realize when the enemy comes, he never comes alone. But he always has to have an entourage to come along with him because he's too fearful to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. So, therefore, he has to get some folks to come with him so he can outnumber you. But I come to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, if the number looks great and nobody's standing there but you, I want to share with you today that you're not alone because you've got some more folks standing around you. And be glad of the fact that these people that are standing around you the enemy can't see them but you know within your heart that they're with you because you know that you serve a God that's able to keep you from falling but not only he's a God that's always there when you need him be thankful today that even if the, you're outnumbered by the enemy you yet still got some good folks standing around you you can rejoice in the fact that you've got God 
standing behind you. You got Jesus walking before you. You got grace on the left. You got mercy on the right. And most importantly, you got the Holy Spirit living on the inside. And if that ain't enough, just know that God can do anything but fail. And that's all that you need. I don't care if you've got 5,000 against you. If you got grace and mercy, if you got Jesus, if you got God, and you got the Holy Spirit living on the inside, that's more than enough against any enemy at any time. I need you to come on and celebrate today. Let somebody know I got enough around me and enough in me that come what may, I'm able to stand even when trouble comes. So Jehoshaphat knew that he was outnumbered, but he also knew in his God. He knew his God was able. And so he took time to have a conversation with God. But before he asked anything of God, the Bible says that Jehoshaphat set himself, set his people and declared a fast before his people and began to pray. That's what I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters. Uh, as we are battling uh, this, this COVID-19, as we are struggling and battling the cares and affairs of our lives, uh, I want to share with you today, uh, in, in, in this life we're going to have trouble, in this life we're going to have problems. And as we try to exist throughout this, I want to share some things with you today that could help you along the way and give you some courage as you continue to stand for God. First thing you need to understand and know that whatever God has for you is for you. Uh, the enemy can't take it. He can't destroy it. Nor can he change the circumstance. Whatever he's got planned for your life, it's going to come to pass. You just got to trust God and know that whenever God begins to do what he needs to do in your life, he's going to do it when it's necessary. He's going to do it at the right time. Uh, you need to know. As we're in this, in this battle, there's some things that we need to do. We need to understand and know that as God is with us, he's ex he expects some things from us. As God is with us, he expects some things from us. And we need to know that when we're in battle, you should never go to battle without being prepared. Text said that Jehoshaphat prepares himself, even before he goes to God in prayer. He prepares himself, he prepares his people. He declares a fast in preparation for what God was about to do in his life. And I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, the main thing you need to know when it comes to being in battle is that you never should go to battle without being prepared. Uh, Paul told the children at Ephesus, the church at Ephesus, that, that listen, when you go into battle, you ought to put on the whole arm of God. Don't, don't just put on the helmet and, and leave your breastplate at the house, but, but put it all on because the devil's going to come at, at any way he can, and, and all he needs is just a crack. And if he can just have a crack, that's enough to get in and destroy the whole body. So that's why Paul said it's important that you put on the whole arm of God. Prepare yourself for battle. The Bible said that Jehoshaphat not only prepared himself, but he prepared his people. Listen, when you're in battle, you need to know the importance of preparation and so you need to prepare yourself for the battle in other words when 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 you first heard news of this pandemic I know it was something different I knew it was something that you've never heard of before but you if you've ever read your bible you know the bible said that there would be times such as these and so so it, it, so I, I as as I recognize the fact that we're in the midst of this pandemic it, it, it did take me, it, it did catch me off guard, but it really didn't take me by surprise because I had prepared myself because I had read in my Bible that these times will come to pass. And, and the Bible tells us that the end ain't even, ain't even near then, but these things must come to pass before the end of time. And so I had, I had already prepared myself because I knew that the word of God said that it must come to pass. And I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, if you want God to fight for you, you got to also be prepared to be in the battle. The Bible says that he, he prepares himself. Then after fasting and praying, he has a conversation with God. We didn't read it in the text, but if you keep reading down through uh, verse 3 and read down 3 through 11, he begins to, to call on God and ask God. Ask God, you know, aren't you the God that, that brought us out of, out of Egypt? Aren't you the God uh, that's creator of all things? Aren't you the God that has all power? 
If you be the God that has all power, where are you right now? We, we need you in a time such as this. And I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, if you want answers from God, you need to take time to have a conversation with God. And a lot of us, my brothers and sisters, always find ourselves complaining about what is, what, about what's not right, about what, what should happen or what shouldn't happen. And we never take the time to take a moment to have a little conversation with the Lord. And there's nothing wrong with asking God questions, but if you want to answer, you got to first off know the importance of asking the question. And the best way to ask the question is to fall down on your knee. and Go to God in prayer. And I can't stop by to tell you today, my brothers and sisters, that prayer still works. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the same God that answered prayer then. If he answered prayer then, I come to share with you today, he'll answer prayer right now. Just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right. Jehoshaphat begins to have a conversation with God through prayer, and he begins to give God, really give God his just due because he says, I, I know you're able to do it, but where are you in times such as these? God, once children had gathered, God began to speak. I'm glad the fact that sometimes God don't always answer immediately. Sometimes he, he allows us to wait. and He answers by and by. But one thing that God will not do, God will not leave us without an answer. He may not answer when you want him to answer, but, but he never leaves us without an answer but in the meantime if we don't get the answer right then just be confident in knowing that when God get ready he gonna he gonna speak to my heart he gonna tell me what to do he gonna order my steps I just got to learn how to wait on him waiting on him you know if I've had a conversation with him if I prayed unto him and Jehoshaphat did pray unto God for the children of Judah and he did pray under God that he might deliver them from the hands of the enemy. But, but there's another thing that God, that uh, Jehoshaphat did was that, that he, in having his conversation with God, he, he, he actually acknowledges the fact that he can't do this by himself. And you need to get to a point to understand that you can't, you can't do this by yourself you can't fight this battle by yourself you you listen you can't walk this journey by yourself you need somebody with you that's able to keep you that's able to protect you that's able to see down the road the thing that you can't see everybody needs somebody and the most important person that you need in your life is god so the bible says jehoshaphat said listen we, we don't have no answer for this great company that comes up against us. He says, but, but our eyes are set on you. In other words, if you go back to last week. We talked about the children of Israel always singing the hymn. We lift our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help. Jehoshaphat, just like those who had traveled to Jerusalem many times before, knew the importance of setting their eyes on the God that sits high and looks down low. He said, listen, we don't know what to do. He said, but we're going to wait on you, and our eyes are going to be set on you. We're we waiting on you to, to respond. And so the next thing we need to know, even though we're in this battle, and we're not in this battle alone, and sometimes we're going to have battles in our lives. First thing I told you that we should prepare ourselves for the battle, but then after preparing ourselves for the battle, we then also need to learn how to position ourselves for the promise. Yeah, you, you've got to position yourself for the promise. You've you got to be in the right place at the right time. You, you've got to make sure that when God provides his promise, you're in the right place. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not, never was a big football player. I loved the game of football, played in my younger days as a child. But when I got older, uh, my body never got bigger, and I didn't like the idea uh, or folks hitting me so hard, you know, that it could break bones. And so I decided that my little frail body didn't have no business being out on the football field because, number one, I didn't prepare my body to receive that type of physical contact. So I, I wasn't ready to play it. And so since I hadn't prepared myself, I decided I wouldn't play. But, but I, I've watched it uh, all of my life. Uh, my brothers played. My older brothers uh, were good football players. Uh, in, in their high school days, and, and, and they played well, but, but I, I was the little frail one uh, that, that if you thumped me hard enough, I might break something, and, and I ain't much 
past that today, but I thank God that I'm able to yet still get up in the morning and put one foot in front of the other. I may not be able to do what everybody else do, but look, I can do what I can do with the help of the good Lord, so I'm thankful for that. But I noticed something about football. During their offense, they, they, have, they, they either have a running game or they'll have a passing game, and sometimes they, they intermingle them in the process of running their offense. But I've noticed something about that passing offense. And even with the running offense, number one, uh, the quarterback is lined up behind the center. And so he's positioned himself uh, to receive the ball because now he's lined up behind the center. The center now gives the ball to the quarterback. Now, if it's a running game, the running back needs to be in position to receive the ball. So he needs to be behind the quarterback or somewhere near the quarterback that once the ball is snapped, and the quarterback receives the ball, he can give the running back the ball where he's supposed to be. Now, if he's supposed to be lined up on the right, and the play calls for him to go right, but yet he's lined up on the left, this play's going to go wrong because he's out of position. But if he's lined up on the right, and knowing that the play is going to the right, then he's going to receive the ball right where he needs it to go, and then his, deep, his, his offensive linemen are going to be in position to block him so he can go all the way up the field. But if he was not positioned, then the quarterback ends up holding the ball, probably going to end up getting sacked. They're going to be... Uh, uh, hit with a loss of yardage, and then they got to run the play all over again. So, so it's important to understand and know the importance of being in the right position, even if they had a passing offense. And what happens is, number one, the quarterback has to be in position to receive the ball because he needs to be lined up behind the center. Now, now receivers need to be where they need to be, whether they're uh, out wide or whether they're in the slot. Uh, uh, even the running back may be commissioned to go out into yardage and receive a pass, but whoever's is position of whoever is uh, chosen to go out to receive the pass, pass, number one, need to make sure that they're in their position before the ball is snapped. But then after the ball is snapped, they need to make sure that they go or run the route that's been designated for them. Because if the route is designated for them, then, then they need to understand that anything beyond that could cause some problems. So if he runs his route, it's important that he runs his route exactly the way the route has been displayed as exactly the way it's been put in the playbook because the quarterback has in mind that at some point when this route is completed, I've got to make sure that I've thrown the ball to the place where this receiver is supposed to be. Now, if this receiver decides he wants to run left when he was supposed to go right, guess where the ball is going? The ball is going right because the play was designed for the receiver to catch it in the slot going right somewhere down the field if he decides to go left he's setting it up now for the defense to get an interception or for it to be an incomplete pass but i guarantee you if you got a good quarterback and a good receiver the receiver knows the importance of going down the field running the route the way it's to be run because if i run the route the way it's supposed to be run somewhere down the field that ball's gonna fall in my hand but i've got to know the importance of running the route and being in position before the ball is even thrown I need to share with you today, my brothers and sisters. Listen, when God is getting ready to shower down a blessing, listen, you need to be in the right place at the right time because if you happen to go a different direction, you just might miss your blessing. I need somebody here today give glory to God that it's important to be in position because if you're not in position, you just might miss the blessing. Listen, the blessing is being in position for the blessing. Not only, not only did he prepare himself for battle, but he, he also positioned himself for the promise. The promise was this. Joseph, had, listen, you don't need what you used to have when you go into war. And I know you've seen me do it many times for you when you had your spears, you had your your slingshots, you had your shields, you had your armor, uh, you had your chariots, you had your horses. And I know you had a game plan, but, but, but Jehoshaphat, I'm going to do something different this time. And I need you to make sure that you pay attention to exactly what I say because, listen, this battle right here, you ain't going to need a spear. You're not going to need a shield. You're not going to need no helmet. Listen, we're we going to fight this fight. A whole lot different. I just need you to follow my instructions. He says, first of all, 
as you position yourself, the first thing you need to do is, God says right there in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, right there to, in verses uh, 15 through 17, when you get to 17, he says, you don't need to fight in this battle. In positioning yourself for the promise, how do you posi position yourself? He told them to, first of all, set yourself. Somebody need to set position. Uh, set yourselves. That, that's, that, that's how you receive my promise. That's how you receive your blessing. He says, get in position for the blessing. Then after getting in position, here's the next instruction. He says, after setting yourself, he says, stand ye still. Mm. Mm. You know, most of the time when you're in a fight, it causes mobility. You got to move. If you're going to knock somebody out, it's going to take some movement of your arm and your shoulder and your fist. If you're going to knock, you just can't stand there and expect to knock somebody out and your hand don't move. But God says this. He says, after you set yourself, he says, be still. Mm. Mm. Wait a minute. How am I going to fight? And I'm standing still. Hmm. How am I going to fight? And I can't move. And I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, God ain't always got to do it the way you think he ought to do it in order to get the job done. I'm going to say that again. God ain't got to do what you think he ought to do to get the job done. He can do it in ways that you never thought of. This particular way, Jehoshaphat had never seen, nor had Judah, but God was fixing to do a new thing in their lives. And I want to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, I don't know how God's going to bring us out of this pandemic. I don't know how God's going to see. I know we, we're looking for a vaccine that we may be able to take to protect us from this pandemic, but, but I come to share with you today, if God does not allow us to find a vaccine, and if the vaccine don't work, I come to share with you today, God got a plan. God got a way to protect us. God got a way to keeping us. And it may not work the way we think it ought to work, but if God set it in order, it's going to work. I need you to let somebody know today it's going to work. It's going to work. You need to tell somebody in your house, go back to the room and bring them away to the front room. Let them know, listen, God got a plan worked out, and it's going to work out. We just got to stand still and wait on. He said, he said be still. So, so, so after... After we have prepared ourselves for what God's about to do, after we prepared ourselves for battle, he says then, after preparing, you got to position yourself for the blessing, position yourself in this battle. But then after that, here's something else we, we, we don't normally do, and we've got to learn how to do it. we got to paralyze ourselves to everything else that's going on around us. Let me say that again. First of all, we need to prepare ourselves for the battle. Secondly, we need to position ourselves for the promise. And thirdly, we need to paralyze ourselves to everything that's going on around us. Because, see, some things that happen around us will cause a reaction out of us. But, but, but God says, don't let what's going on around you cause a reaction from you that's not according to my will. If I tell you to be still, be still. If I tell you to run, run as fast as you can run. If I tell you to jump, you need to ask me, Lord, how high? But if I tell you to be still, he says, learn how to paralyze yourself to everything else going on around you. In other words, God knew that they were going to get scared when they looked at this great number coming up against them, and it was much more than what they had. God knew that some were going to panic and start running back. Some were going to start fussing at Jehoshaphat, asking them the same question that, that, that their forefathers asked Moses, you know, why you bring us out here to die? God knew that all that was going to come. He says, but I need some folk that will hear me and do exactly what I tell them to do. I, I want them to just be still and watch me work. My brothers and sisters, I know it's hard to be still. I know it's hard to stay in that house when they tell you to stay in the house. I know it's hard. I know it's hard not to go 
not to go not to go to the grocery store. I know it's hard to sit at home on Sunday morning and not be in worship. I know it's hard. Tr trust me, you, you're talking to somebody who feels just like you feel. But my brothers and sisters, what I've learned during this time is I've learned to be more patient. I've learned to hear God in everything that he says. I've, I've learned to watch God in everything that he does. Some of the things that I, I just was taking for granted just to rise another sun. I go out in the morning now just to watch the sun rise because I just want to see what God is doing in this day and in this season. So I've learned to watch. I've learned just to be still and be patient and watch God. He says, children, be able to learn how to paralyze yourself to everything else that's going on. Yeah. I, I know your neighbor may be going in and out all day long. He said, but just because your neighbor going in and out all day long don't mean it's safe for you. If I tell you to stay in the house, stay in the house. So we got to learn when we're in battle. We're fighting against this enemy. Whether it be a pandemic or whether it be Satan himself working through the hearts of men. Prepare yourself for the battle. Position yourself for the promise. Don't do what everybody else is doing, but paralyze yourself to everything going on around you. Learn how to be still. And then the last thing that he tells them right there in verse 17, he says, set yourselves, stand ye still. And then lastly, he says, see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah, and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Last thing we need to do is, listen, before we even go into battle, we need to have the confidence in knowing that it's already won. So we need to picture ourselves victorious even before the battle begins. And that's what we need to do in these times. My brothers and sisters, I know we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I know we don't know what the true answer or what the true remedy is to this pandemic. But what we need to do in this time is that we need to picture ourselves being victorious over this pandemic. Because at some point and at some time, there, there's going to be some victory in this. In fact, there's already victory in this because somebody's praying a little more than they used to pray. Somebody's, somebody's loving their neighbor a little bit more than they used to love. Somebody's loving their children a little bit more than they used to love them. Somebody's having a conversation in the home that they, they normally wouldn't have because they're all together. Now, somebody's sitting at the family table and eating and when they've never had a meal at the table before. Somebody's doing some things different just because God has allowed certain things to happen. It's allowed us to take time out and see what God is doing, but then it also should give us the confidence of knowing that whatever is going on at the end of the day God's gonna get some glory out of this and if God get glory then I'm gonna get blessed so I might as well act like it's already done and before trouble come I ought to always declare myself victorious over the enemy come what may I ought to go ahead and picture myself being more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us and he loved us so much that one Friday he spared his own life for our lives that we may have the right to the tree of life that we may be forgiven of sin that we may have an eternal home in glory that we may have the presence of his spirit working on the inside all because of what he did one Friday we ought to have an air of confidence to know that this too shall pass so therefore I'm going to declare myself victorious come what may because I serve a God who is victorious because one Friday even though he died for me early the third day morning he got up for me and he still lives today and still has all power still has all the glory still victorious and there's nothing that my God can do but I've got to know within myself that the God I serve is able to deliver not only but he's made me a conqueror because I trust in him yeah. so Bible says Bible says that God did a new thing he said listen he said listen Joseph you ain't gonna need 
those weapons of war to fight this battle. He said, because really, this battle ain't yours. I know you think it's, it's affecting you, and it, it may be affecting you in, in a lot of ways, but, but, but however it affects you, it, listen, it's not going to take you down, nor will it take you out because you serve a God that is victorious over all things. And because he's victorious, consider yourselves victorious because you serve a God that reigns in victory. So today, my brothers and sisters, I just want to declare to you today, I know we're in a battle. And I know it may seem rough on this side. But there's some good news in the text today that if you trust the Lord, there are some things that, 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 that God has in store for us if we just humble ourselves before the Almighty. If I could just suggest to you today, my brothers and sisters, as we're going through these troubling times, I want to let you know today, my brothers and sisters, that what we're going through is bigger than us and that we serve a God that has allowed this to happen, but yet he allowed it because he has purpose behind everything that he does or allows. So I come to share with you today, my brothers and sisters, some things that we can do when we feel like the enemy is closing in because Jehoshaphat knew that the enemy was closing in and that the enemies were outnumbering the people that he had on his side. But he learned to do a few things in preparing for the battle. And then because he knew a few things to do in preparing for the battle, God showed up and gave him further instruction. And so today, my brothers and sisters, it's important to know what to do. When trouble comes in your life, look to God who is able not only to hear, but he's able to deliver you out of your trouble. First thing that Jehoshaphat did and we ought to do is we ought to set our eyes on him. If we prepare ourselves for God's promise, if we prepare ourselves for God's blessing, we'll receive all that God has for us. We need to know the importance of preparation. We need to always be ready in season and out of season. We need to be ready for when trouble comes. We'll know that we've got a God on our side. But in having a God on our side, we've got to be able to know that it's important to put on the whole armor of God. That you might be able to fight against the wiles of the devil. And don't just put on your helmet, but put on your breastplate too. Have your shield in one hand and your rod in the other. Have your sword on your side. Have your shoes laced up. Uh, and be ready for the battle. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being prepared. Because when you're prepared, that lets the enemy know. And that let God know. That whatever you have for me, uh, I'm ready to receive it. Jehoshaphat prepared his people and prepared himself by first of all having his eyes set on God and then going down in prayer. And I stopped by to tell you today that prayer is a strong weapon against the enemy. If you pray right and give it all to God, God hears and answers prayer. Do I have a witness out there that can just lift your hands today uh, and declare that prayer will uh, change things? Uh, won't he do it? Uh, have you tried him? Have you ever went down on your knees and did not know what to say? Uh, for those of you listening today uh, that might want to pray uh, but don't know what to say, uh, can I share with you a few words that'll let God know 
that your heart is open uh, and you need his help uh, I know that there are a lot of good praying folk uh, that know how to call on the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob uh, I know that there are a lot of prayer warriors uh, that can talk about the fact that they got up this morning and looked back and found out that the four corners of the bed was not the four corners of their grave. I know we got some real good prayer warriors that can say eloquent prayers that as they got up this morning uh, and pulled back their sheets uh, that they found that the sheets that they laid on uh, was not their winding sheets uh, and it sound real good uh, and God does know and understand uh, but for those of you uh, who may not can call him eloquently uh, may not have the good verses of speech uh, uh, may not be able to call him as the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob can I share with you a few words uh, that will get God's attention if you could just go down on your knees throw open your arms and say Lord have mercy on me that will open the door if you could just open up your hand and say Father I stretch my hand to thee no other help I know if you don't know how to say that if you don't feel comfortable saying that if you could just open up your mouth and say I need thee oh how I need thee every hour I need thee and if that ain't good enough if you could just open up your mouth and say Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done and if that ain't good enough if you could just open up your mouth and say daddy I need you right now God will hear and answer prayer ain't the Lord all right the Bible said that Jehoshaphat prepared himself for the battle and I want to share with you today I know we're going through storm and trouble time but prepare yourself for what God is about to do if you prepare yourself you'll receive what God has for you ain't the Lord all right after preparing yourself you need to make sure and very soon you're in the right place at the right time so position yourself for God's promise ain't the Lord all right if you're in the right place you'll get what God has for you ain't God good not only then but when trouble get come closer and it seemed like the enemy is approaching a little fast this is not the time to panic this is not the time to run but the bible said when trouble come after having a talk with jesus after being a uh, positioning ourselves for his promise paralyze ourselves to everything going on around us come what may I'm gonna stand still and wait on God is there anybody here that's listening to me right now that's willing to stand still storm may rise wind may blow rain may fall but stand still and let God work ain't the Lord all right after standing still and paralyzing ourselves to everything that may be going on around us the last thing and really the first and last thing that we need to do in fact before trouble even come you ought to already have this attitude and when trouble come 
you ought to still have the same attitude. And when trouble is gone, you ought to still have this attitude. We ought to have the attitude. We ought to have the promise within our spirit to picture ourselves already being victorious. Can I get somebody to lift up your hands and picture yourself already victorious? Can you lift up your hand and say, for God I live and for God I'm willing to die. Can you keep the hand lifted and picture yourself victorious and declare in your room right now, I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loved me. And God so loved this whole world that he gave his only begotten son uh, that one Friday evening uh, he laid down his life for us uh, and right early uh, Sunday morning uh, he got up uh, and declared uh, all power heaven and earth uh, is in my hand uh, I want to share with you today I know you're going through uh, but hang on in there uh, be still God will, I said be still, God will, be still, God will, he'll fight your battle, can you say amen, can you shout hallelujah, can you say amen, can you say glory to God, ain't he alright, shout yeah, do you love him, shout yeah, do you trust him, Shout yeah, if you know he's all right. Shout yeah. Yeah. Be still. God will fight your battle. Can I just say it like I feel it? Be still. God got this. Come what may, he's got it. Follow him, trust him. Be patient. Let God work this thing out the way he's already designed. Stay in place. Don't let what's going on around you cause you to lose your faith and trust in him. God knows exactly what he's doing in times such as these. To the unsaved, I offer you Christ today. To that very one who may be listening to this broadcast and has not given their lives to Christ. Why is it important? What, what's the significance in it? Well, you need to know that there's life beyond this life. There is something called eternality, which means anything that's eternal goes on forever and there is eternal life after this life but there's also two destinations in eternity there's eternal damnation there's eternal glory eternal damnation is a place where evil doers and slaves of Satan live forever. It's a place of torment, fire and brimstone. And you suffer through torment, eternal fire and brimstone forever. I don't think anybody wants to live forever being tormented, tortured, burned and never burn up but just burn forever I don't think anybody wants that I think you want the other side I think you want to be a part of, of eternal glory where you can live in heaven with God forever where there's no sickness there's no death there'll be no more pandemics no more aches and pains about the body 
there'll be no day and night every day the sun shall shine and we shall live forever with God I think you would want that versus torment and torture and hell's fire and I don't say that to scare you I'm just giving you reality and the truth according to the scriptures you don't have to die and go to hell and, and be a part of eternal damnation. There is a way out. You were born. When you came here into this world, you were born to die. If you have not given your life to Christ, eternal damnation will be your home forever. But God gave his only son to deliver us from the hands of bondage from eternal damnation. We don't have to live forever in eternal damnation. We can give our lives to Christ and live forever with, with God in eternal glory. And it's as simple as confessing that you are a sinner and you need a savior. Say, God, I'm, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. And I believe that Jesus died to save the sinner. And I need salvation. I, I believe that he was born. I believe he lived. I believe he died. I believe that, that you raised him on the third day. And I believe that he still lives. But I need him to live in me. Lord, I open up my heart that you might live in me. Show me your way that I may receive eternal glory and live with you. If you can confess in, with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised his son from the dead, that I may have eternal life with him, you can receive salvation. Won't you do that today? I can't save you, but he can. If you open up your heart to him, he can save you today. He can save you right now. Give your heart to him. To the saved who may have backslidden and wants to rededicate your life to God. You can do that. You can do that today. Have a talk with him. Say, Lord, I... I gave my life to you a long time ago, but I've, I've, I've fallen away from your love. I've fallen away from the relationship that I have with you. And I want to, to reestablish that relationship. You can do that today. Just have a talk with him. Just admit I've strayed away, but I want to come home. He will receive you. Because you belong to him. And to the saved who's, who's just day by day trying to make it in the midst of troubling times. I want to encourage you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not your, to your own understanding, but in everything, all your ways, acknowledge him. The Bible declares that he will direct your path. Let him have his way. Stay close to him. Continue to trust him. Well, my brothers and sisters, that's all the time I have for today. But I want to say to each and every one of you who are listening today, continue to pray for one another. Continue to love one another. Continue to look to God in and for all things. God's got this. God's got you. Continue to trust in him. We hope and pray something was said or done that would further your walk with Christ. For truly it is about our walk with him. May he continue to cover and keep you. May he continue to bless you and your families. Now may the grace of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, 
may it rest with us may it rule over us may it abide in us till we meet again we ask it all in the precious name of jesus the christ son of the living god we do pray amen may god bless you may heaven smile on you is always our prayer